it it feels like, and maybe maybe this sounds a little heavy handed, that uh, the media or maybe people are villainizing uh, Shohei Otani. Like now, this contract situation, like oh, okay, unfair to the other teams here. Well, Otani. Now, this was uh, Jack Harris of the L.A. Times said that Otani took this approach to defer money to all the teams that he negotiated with. It wasn't just because of California with uh, taxes. He was saying, look, I want to know what kind of farm system you have that we're going to spend money and we're going to make sure that we're playing in playoff games while I'm here, winning World Series. Now, I'm paraphrasing that, but it's basically what are we doing? What's the bigger picture here? And this is probably where he had a lot of problems with the Angels. What is the future? What are we doing? They spent one draft, and all they did is draft pitchers. But according to Jack Harris of the LA Times, given that Otani's contract roughly equates to a 10-year, $460 million deal, I'd argue that he's chasing rings a lot more than chasing every last dollar. Any team could have done this, but he wanted to do it with the Dodgers. And if you think about this, and this is sort of what Tom Brady did, not to this degree, but I remember when Brady was deferring money and maybe his salary was $10 million, restructuring. Well, he was making a lot of money off the field. And his wife at the time, Giselle, was making a lot of money as well. He could defer it. You still get it, but you're helping your team in the process. And what's this all about? For you know, Tom Brady, it was winning Super Bowls to be the greatest player, certainly the greatest quarterback of all time. Otani, if he wants to be, you know, legendary from the standpoint of winning, he's already going to be because of the contract, being a pitcher, being a hitter. And now it's about winning. These next 10 years are about winning. And the Dodgers have one World Series to show for it, with a lot of success getting into the playoffs. Now you have Otani, and you expect World Series titles. He expects World Series titles. But also to make sure that you can still afford Mookie, I mean, you know, everybody on that roster. And if you want to bring in free agents, that now you have that opportunity. Because a lot of times, you know, when you have a star player who gets all the money that he wants, the other, you know, parts of the team sacrifice. Or you have to sacrifice. You may lose somebody. And this is a situation where Otani and his agent looked at this, found that there's a loophole here, and decided to take advantage of it. Yeah, Paul. According to the Sports Business Journal, uh, Otani has a luxury of not needing his paycheck because last year he made $40 million estimated off the field in endorsements, both in the United States and Japan. Mm -hmm. And that's expected to increase because of the visibility of the L.A. Dodgers. And uh, they, they said next year it should be over $60 million in endorsements per year for Otani. Yeah, so, you know, did they outsmart everybody? Now, down the road, if I'm the commissioner of baseball, do I want this going on? It's just dangerous. It's dangerous for, you know, some of the te these teams with their owners and what they have their money tied up in. You know, it's like the housing market, the housing bubble. Hey, go ahead. Get a house. Everybody gets a house. Then all of a sudden, you're underwater here. And, you know, Major League. Now, I have more of a problem when teams don't spend. When you do spend, great. As, as a fan, I have no problem with that. But I do think, you know, how baseball looks at this, what the commissioner thinks of this, the Players Association is probably like, hey, we don't want to change it. Why would you? You've got a $700 million contract here. You're still getting your money. But the question is, what's this do for teams trying to be solvent? You know, these smaller market teams. You know, Kansas City Royals, are they going to do this? They can't do this. And that's where your only, you know, your, your strength is, you know, your weakest team. Like, ha does everybody uh, have a chance here? The competitive balance of all of this. Having a chance to, every fan base this year going into the NFL probably thought, you know what? We got a shot. You know, maybe. I don't know if any team goes in and goes, we have absolutely, positively no shot. In baseball, you have that. You don't have any chance. And maybe some NBA teams as well. Uh, baseball, there's a lot of teams where it's basically you got about five to seven teams. Maybe you get an outlier in there. Maybe it's like, oh, my God, that team's a whole lot better than we thought. But sustainability, 
really, really hard to do. Yes, Eden. Do you think the commissioner looks at this uh, contract and maybe makes some changes moving forward? Well, I don't know if he has the full power to do that. Because I would think with the collective bargaining agreement and getting the player association, and I mean, they're never on the same page here. So that would be my only thing is, I don't think he has the you know total autonomy to go, you know, we're going to change this. Well, when Verducci joins us, I'll ask him about that. But, you know, if you're Shohei Otani, you don't need the money, you're going to get the money. Yeah, see. To me, to me it, it is a massive red flag for the league. Mm-hmm. Massive. Because you can't have teams pushing off. I get the whole, you know, Benia thing. Or like, hey, yeah, look, $1.5 million a year for the next 25 years. Ha, ha, ha. Right? That's way different than pushing off hundreds of millions of dollars in one contract off into 10 years into the future, you know, Mookie Betts, what does his contract look like? Now all of a sudden you're looking at close to a billion dollars in deferred compensation. That ball can start rolling downhill extremely fast, and that is a terrible idea, not just for one individual team, but for the league as a whole. 